Hi everyone, welcome back to Farron and Film. Today we are bringing you our top 10 films of 2022. So on my list and Ruby's list, because Ruby has now seen 10 films of 2022, I have now caught up with all the ones that, well, some of the ones that I wanted to catch up with. I'll mention the ones that I didn't quite get to in just a little bit. Before we get started, just wanted to point out that we're doing this in uniform. I've had mine for a while. Ruby's came the other day and we had to put something on the back of Ruby's. Yeah. Go on. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, because she gives everything 10 out of 10. And what else do you want to show them? My mum did this. And she's painted her nails. Yeah, right. Show them there. Let's put you in a little bit. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go from 10 to 1, taking it in turns. Are you in? No. Uh, and we are, and don't, don't say anything about this yet, don't spoil this yet. We're going to have a little bit of an announcement at the end of the video, okay? Yeah. Shh. Shh. Right. <laughs> so, <clears throat> what I've been trying to do over the last couple of weeks while I've been off from work and or we've been off from school and all that kind of stuff is to catch up with any films that I hadn't seen. Now, there are four films in my ten that I have only seen in these two weeks. So I'm very, very glad that I managed to get to them when I did. The ones that I didn't quite get to, Bones and All, Decision to Leave, and The Woman King. So none of them are in my top 10. Uh, none of them would be in my list because I haven't seen them. Similarly, I suppose, Avatar. I'm not going to watch Avatar because I'm not interested. Uh, but we're going to start off with our number 10s. Now, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Do you want me to go first, right? So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to, I'm going to say my number 10, and then I'm going to say just a little bit about it, so then you can do the same about yours, okay? So my number 10 is the first film that I watched this year. I watched it on New Year's Day this year, I think, and it's Boiling Point. Now, Boiling Point technically, I think, is a 2021 release, but obviously we're in the UK, so I'm going off UK release dates. Do you want a pillow to sit on? Are you all right? You want a pillow to sit on? Bear with people. Back your bum and that. Exactly. Is that better? Yeah, because it looks like I'm seven. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Uh, yeah, so this is the Stephen Graham one-shot drama where he plays a chef in a extremely busy London restaurant and it is all designed to look like, or at least, I don't think they had... They, you, you haven't seen this one. Okay, because there's a lot of bad words in it. There's a lot of swear words in it. I will say this, there are no crossovers on our lists. There are no films on Ruby's list that are on my list and vice versa. So my number 10 is Boiling Point, Stephen Graham. Drama, directed by Philip Barantini. Very, very good film. I recommend that you check it out if you haven't already. It is on Netflix, I believe. So number 10, Ruby. Next year. Now... You said this when we did your list that you didn't really like that year. Oh, I don't like it. Right. But if I say to you now, what are you going to give it out of 10? You know I'm going to give it out of 10. What are you going to give it out of 10? Zero out of 10. Zero? Yeah, I don't like it. So you're not even going to give it like three? Yeah, three out of three. No, three out of 10. Three out of 10. So you're going to give it three out of 10? Yep, I don't like it. Do you want to say anything else about it? Mm. No? Okay, right. No. Uh, my number nine is After Sun. Uh, the Paul Mescal starring, Charlotte Wells directed, Frankie Corio starring as well. A uh, film about a father and daughter who go on holiday to Spain. And there were a lot of things in it that, if I'm honest, when I first started watching it, I thought, oh, this is going to be one of those slow and plodding films. And it is very talky. There's nothing sort of big action-y things that happen in it or anything like that. So I thought I wasn't going to enjoy it as much as I enjoyed other stuff. But what are you doing? Great. Um, but I really enjoyed the relationship between the two main characters. I really enjoyed the sort of the honesty and the truth in Paul Mescal's performance in that he is essentially still a young man and out of his depth a little bit and trying as best he can do to deal with his young daughter. I wonder how that might feel. Um, and again, I just thought the performances were excellent and I thought the way that it was shot and the, the, the script as well 
was excellent. The, the splatterings of improvisation that they'll have in them as well. So that's my number nine, After Sun. Potential, you know, Oscar noms on the way. Did well at the Biffers. But let's take Ruby's take. Ruby, what's your number nine? Minions. Minions, The Rise of Gru. Now, you liked Minions. Yes, I loved it so much. Right, so we're talking number nine. What are you giving this out of ten? Ten out of ten, I thought so every other film on that list has got 10 out of 10? Yes. Does not like it, but I don't like it. Do See, because I'd give... Right, so I'd give Boiling Point, which was my number 10. I think I'd give that 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10? Yeah. I'd give After Sun 8 out of 10. Yeah. And then we'll work our way down the list. So do you want to say anything about Minions? What did you enjoy about Minions? Um, so... What my favourite thing was about Minions is when um the, the little boy shouted at the Minions. It was so funny. Right. And that's it. Let's do number eight. Right. So my number eight is The Menu. Um, I watched this quite recently. Uh, the Ray Fiennes, Anya Taylor-Joy, Nicholas Holt um, starring film about a couple... Who go on to a? Oh, they're invited to. A, a, oh, they've paid actually. They've paid to go to this sort of remote island. What are you laughing at? Oh, no. They've paid to go to a remote island, and uh, they get cooked certain uh, exquisite meals by the chef. And very slowly but surely, everything doesn't turn out to be the way that it is. It's a very good script, very well written, and again, I enjoyed that one. So. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is the winter podcast, as you can tell. Number eight for you, Ruby. Sing two. Now, I'm surprised you put Sing two so low because you've watched it again recently. I love and, it. And you like the songs in it. And if I'm honest, there are at least two more films above Sing two on your list that are rubbish. So I'm surprised. What's your favourite bit about Sing two? When um when um the gorilla person mm. sings a song that I don't And Johnny sings a song. Yeah. You like the tippy toes, tippy toes, tippy toes bit, don't you? Tippy toes. Yeah. Tippy I don't see no tippy toes. There you go. Amazing. Uh right, number seven. My number seven, uh again another this was one of the first Oh, sorry, one of the first four. Actually, coincidentally, the next four films on my list are all the ones that I have watched recently. So uh, number seven is Glass Onion. Now, I wasn't that much of a fan of Knives Out. I think it's a good film. I think it's well written and well, you know, the narrative works really well. You're not having that film anymore. Um, and I don't think I've been able to talk about any one of my films without you stopping me. Mm. Nuisance. Uh mm. Yeah, so I, I enjoyed Night Knives Out to a point. I think I got a, my back up a little bit because it revealed stuff a bit too early. But what I really like about Glass Onion is it lets the story play out, lets the narrative play out. I think the ensemble cast are very perfectly pitched and perfectly cast, and I really, really enjoyed this one. Ruby's getting bored. What's your number seven, Rubes? Um, this better when I'm doing this quickly. Quick. DC League of Super Pets. Yeah, because you need to um, like, rubbish. You need to put um, Shh. You're gonna say about that, aren't you? No, you need what? Wednesday. No, Wednesday's a TV show. Yeah, but do you like Wednesday? Right, I'll tell you what we'll do. When we get to five, actually after number six, we'll stop and we'll talk about some TV. Right? You froze my heart. Right. Number six, number seven for you is DC League of Super Pets, which is Bobbins. Yeah, I don't like it. Jeez, you're number seven. You've put it above Sing 2 and Minions. Ah, uh, I'm joking. I like it. Whatever. Right. Uh, my number six. Now, Ruby wanted this in her list because she said that she liked it. Now, she said that she liked it because I was watching it one day while Ruby was downstairs. And she watched about 20 minutes of it. And then got very interested in the end of it. Um, so this is Elvis. Now, I didn't think I'd enjoy Elvis as much as I did. I must admit, it took me a while to sort of get into it. I think Baz Luhrmann was going a little bit crazy. 
with the edits and the shot transitions and all that kind of stuff. Austin Butler is perfect as Elvis. It is one of the best performances of the year, if not the best performance of the year. Ruby wants to tell you what happens at the end of Elvis. Now, I would say spoiler, but I get the feeling that everyone knows what probably happens at the end of Elvis. So, Ruby, what happens at the end of Elvis? Elvis dies. Oh, my God. Like, totally new information. Now... I'm so sad about this. She's been obsessed since we watched it. She barely watched it. She watched less than an hour of it, and it's a nearly two, nearly three-hour film. And look. Yeah, she's lost another tooth. Hill, uh, Hillbilly Ruby. Right. The Chip Game. Do you number six, and then we can talk about TV. My number six is Pocus Pocus 2. Again, rubbish. Um, this one's all right. This one was Bob. This one. I mean, you like the Sanford sisters, don't you? And you yeah. like all the singing and all that kind of yeah. nonsense. Right, <laughs> right. We'll have, a, we'll have a gap to talk a little bit about the TV that we've watched this year then. Yeah. Because me and you, together, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something now that you're probably not going to understand, right? But yeah. me and you, for the first time ever, yeah. watched our first box set, right? Now, obviously, it's a bit different. It's on Netflix and all that kind of stuff. This was the first time that we watched a series, episode one, to the end, together. And we watched Wednesday, didn't we? Yeah, and it's absolutely and good. You should absolute watch it. good. So if you so, Stick that on the poster. So if you go on a, um, a grown-ups one, you could type Wednesday, as a girl and has a Wednesday, you might see Wednesday or an umbrella. You press that, and then the video episode. Wednesday. So, because you only have the ki- the child Netflix, the kids Netflix, you can't get in the Wednesday on yours, can you? So we have to watch it on mine. Now, what happened? What happened with this is that she watched episode one about four times before we then decided to move on to episode two. It's okay. It's just a little cut. And then we carried on and we carried on and we carried on until. You were waiting for Uncle Festa, weren't you? Yeah, I love Uncle Um, Because you wanted Uncle Festa to pop up. Now, what we, what we can't do, because it's still new, is talk about anything that happens. Okay. So we can't talk about who did what and all that kind of stuff. We can mention the dance. You like the dance, don't you? The dance has sort of taken everybody by storm. Ruby wants to learn the dance, don't you? Yeah. Um, I actually wrote down a list of TV that I watched this year, just to mention really quick. And I've got the Wednesday song. She's got the Wednesday song. But I don't know the dance. She's not the dance yet. So I go on the dance where Wednesday dance is gone, and I copy the dance because I don't know the dance. Some things to mention, just to put on your radar, if you've not seen these. Uh, Dan on Netflix, I think everyone watched that when it came out. Uh, the Patient on Disney+, Plus. very good performances by Donald Gleeson and Steve Carell. Blackbird on Apple TV, Taryn Edgerton, Paul Walter Severance, which was very, very good, if not a slow burn, but the final episode is one of the best final episodes I've ever seen of a series ever. And of course, season four of Stranger Things. Now, let's get back to the films. Right, my number five, one that me and mum watched the other day. Um, so again, it was a recent one. Uh, she said, so this is about the Harvey Weinstein abuse scandal um, mm. and everything that happened in that and uh, Tom Beasley good friend Tom Beasley friend of the podcast he's been on it before I saw in his top 10 that he mentioned she said and he put in um, his little blurb that he's, he did his little tweet about how he doesn't think Zoe Kazan is getting the awards attention that she deserves I completely agree with you Tom I do think that Zoe Kazan is one of the best things about this film obviously Kerry Mulligan puts in a good performance as well a uh, very subtle performance from Andre Brower. But again, I think Zoe Kazan is deserving of at least a nomination somewhere in the So that is number five. She said, highly recommend you go and watch it. Number five for Ruby. Wait, um, God, what Mrs. Doubtfire was. Mrs. Doubtfire wasn't. Mrs. You know, like, there's a poster there, Rubes, right? Of Mrs. Doubtfire, oh. right? Look what it says in, in, in red letters. The, it says the... Blockbuster of 1994. 1994. And we forgot to put Mrs. Doubtfire in our 2022 top 10 list. You know how old that film is? 
28 years old. What? Right. So it's not going to be in the top 10. Don't do that. You want to show everyone the number one? Right. Number five. What's your number five? Right, now I'm so surprised that this wasn't further up the list because you love the Lion Lion Crocodile. I love it. And you love the songs. Um, Take a look at me now. Take a look at me now. And I'll be honest, it was the most surprising film of 2022 for me. I thought it was going to be a lot of tosh, but I actually quite enjoyed it. Um, And I'm just surprised it's not further up Ruby's list. Right, now. One that I want to talk about for a little bit because I've not spoke about it on here before, right? So try and zoosh for about a minute, okay? Right. My number four is Cha Cha Real Smooth. Now, this is on Apple TV. I watched it the other night. And again, I didn't think much about it. I just I knew that it was about a relationship or it was about um, a character, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, obviously, it's about character. Stupid thing to say. And... I wasn't expecting too much going into it. When it started, I thought, okay, this is going to be feeling middling, run of the mill sort of thingy. I fell in love with the characters. I, not like that, you're weird. Or, um, I, I I thought Cooper Ray's performance uh, was fantastic. I thought Dakota Johnson was fantastic. The relationship between those two people was so truthful. And the sort of honesty in the performance from Cooper was next to none of anything that I've seen this year. It was a very, very strong contender for my favourite actor of the year and my favourite performance of the year, uh, right up there with Austin Butler and Elvis. I absolutely believed every every word that he said. The script is very witty. Everything hits. Um, and again, it totally surprised me. Totally took me out of surprise. And it went straight up to number four in my top ten. Right, I'm done. What's your number four? Um, okay. No, I, right, I say that in like a, not that I'm going to like marry them and kiss them, but in a, I really, really like them. Come on. Sonic 2. Right, so Ruby's number four is Sonic 2, which we got to watch um in the cinema and then we got to watch at home early, thanks to Paramount UK. And yeah, it's good. I love it. Yeah. Anything else you want to say about it? Well, I don't know. I'm not going to. No, you don't need your Sonic Teddy. Oh, God. She got a Sonic Teddy for Christmas. Yep, I got a Sonic Teddy. And I thought it was in the Knuckles, the Eggman, or Tails, or... Okay. Uh, Right, top threes. Right, my my number three. Who's Tom? So do you know the guy who looked after? Oh, right, okay. Uh, my number three is Jordan Peele's Nope, uh, which I went to go and see in the cinema earlier this year, and I've watched a couple of times since. Uh, I think he's an absolute master of melding genres together. I really enjoyed this one, the sci-fi element to it, the sort of grand epic scale of the IMAX cinematography from uh, Heute van Heutemer, I thought was absolutely great as well. And I really love the score. It's got my best piece or my favourite piece of film music from a, from anything this year. The little bit where he's running on the horse at uh, the horse towards the end. Superb, superb score. What is your number three, Ruby? Again, glad that not glad, but surprised that this is where it is. So we got to see Zombies Three early. And Disney were very kind to us, and they sent us out a link for us to watch Zombies Three early. And we reviewed it, and it's one of the most watched reviews on the channel. Yeah, and when Dad said he had a surprise for me, he turned on it, and I was just like, oh, my God, zombie free. I really want to watch that now. And, and I had my jams on, it was like night time, and I watched the whole of the film. Yeah, and you really like it. Hello. And you like the songs, and you um, like the characters. And, and my favourite character is... Stop clapping. My favourite character is Red. I don't know if we told you this, but you know, for your birthday, yeah. how me and Mum got you some zombie dolls? Yeah. You know you had to get them for us? Yeah. Auntie Jady. Because she was in America and she had to bring them all the way from America. What? Yeah. I thought you said... Um, I thought you were in America. And do you know who 
friend and he in the middle was the Z. Uh, no, because it's not real. Uh, right, my number two is Top Gun Maverick. Um, I did an awful lot of talking about Top Gun Maverick with Ollie on the Top 10 Sequels podcast because it was in that list. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I think the last hour is up there with some of the best action scenes or action set pieces I have ever seen. I don't even like the first Top Gun, but this one blew me away. And seeing it in the IMAX was absolutely amazing. Ruby, what's your number two? Turning Red. Turning Red. Why do you like turning red? Because when he says red, it's my favourite colour red. Is that it? And um, May May, the little girl, yeah, into a red uh, it's, it's a good film, isn't it? Yeah, and she wears a hat that no one else likes and spotted her. Like, ha ha, you've got red hair. And there's like a that is a boy that has curly hair and like a mean 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 uh my number one oh, has been my number one since March and it's the Batman. No film has come close this year I'd say um I love the world that it built I love the aesthetic of it I thought it was really great as somebody whose favorite film Sit down. It's because you keep shuffling. If someone whose favourite film is The Dark Knight, I was apprehensive going into this because I saw, admittedly, I, I didn't mind Batfleck, but going into Batman versus Superman, I was a little bit apprehensive about what I was going to see. And then when they do it again and this one comes along, again, I was a little bit apprehensive about what we're going to see here. I love how it's a young Batman, how he's able to make mistakes and he does make mistakes. He doesn't get everything right. Everything's a little bit edgy. Everything's a little bit sort of off the curve. And I'm really looking forward, hopefully, to seeing much more of this world, the Matt Reeves Batman world that we're going to get in future sequels. Ruby's bored because she's yawning. What's your number one, Ruby? Because I'm so this was the last one that you watched at the cinema. This was Matilda the Musical. I love it. You really like the songs, don't you? Yeah. But because you're strange, you really like the sad song. The song. The I'm Here one. Oh. Don't cry, little girl. That one. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, like Revolting Children's the best song, in it? Revolting Me Dirty Children. Not Dirty. Yeah. yeah. Revolting Me Dirty, that's what I mean. Yeah, so you really liked it, didn't you? It should be called Dirty Children because they are. No, Ruby, I explained this to you yesterday, but you 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 won't get it because you're too young, I think. Right. Yeah, I'm also Revol- too right. Old. right. Revolting, yeah. Means, means dirty. disgusting and dirty. But it also means that they are revolting in that they are going against what Miss Trunchbull wants. Yeah, Miss Trunchbull. <laughs> That's as far as film studies gets with Ruby. I'm here is a really, really sad song. Right, so there's like a teacher. Don't spoil it too much because it's still in the cinemas and people might not have seen it. I, say that. I don't know. No, don't. Just say that you like it because it's a nice song. I like it because um, it's just creepy. You like it because it's just creepy? Yeah, because it's scary. You won't do this when you're in the seat watching it. <laughs> right. So I'm gonna we'll go down the lists, okay? So just to repeat again, my number ten was boiling point, nine after sun, eight the menu, seven glass onion, six Elvis, five she said, four cha cha real smooth, three nope, two top gun maverick, and one Batman. Here I go. Right here, minion sing two, DC League of Pets. DC League of Pets. If you want to call it a DC League of Pets, you call it a DC League of Pets. Mm-hmm. Watch your number six. How the book is here? Where are my book? Darcy, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Turn and Red, and Matilda the Musical. Well done. So, we're going to start all over again in 2023. We'll do some more reviews of films that we watch when we go to the cinema. I don't think there's anything that we've seen that's on the horizon of things that we want to watch. 
But we do have a little bit of a thing to share. Yeah, I'm at, hang on. I'm so excited to show you guys. So we've I've got my find on film t-shirt on. <laughs> Ruby's got a find on film t-shirt on. So and <laughs> by definitely mid-year, there's gonna be another fire and on film. And we're having that baby. I'm gonna be a big sister. You are gonna be a big sister. We're having a baby. I'm having a baby. Do you want to buy her a go? Hold on. Because um I want it to be two boys and two girls. Oh, in the house? Yeah, and um we have two girls. I think I know why. Because one could be a man and one could be a baby. That's why we're asking. Baby. That's not a baby. That's not a baby. That's not a baby. That's not a baby. Say at the same time. That's, That's not, not a baby. baby. Right. Uh, we'll have to get another chair. So, like, you know. And then I can go and get it. We can all squash in. I mean, they won't, they won't be able to talk for a while, but, you know. They're going to see you when the baby's born. Yeah. But the baby might not know you at all, because, only it might be a little bit little, and mm -hmm. when we're going to start talking, uh, you know that. Like, it's yeah. fine. So, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening, if you're on the podcast feed. That is it for us for 2022. I hope we all have a lovely New Year. Uh, we are recording this on New Year's Eve and it's going out on New Year's Eve. Uh, one, we're not staying up. We're not staying up. No, no, no. It's just another day. Yeah. And we will see you in 2023. So in the meantime, you can help support Farron on Film by going over to our sponsor, Offworld Tees, yes. and using the code Farron, that's F-A-R-R-A-N-D, for 15% off your order. Follow me on Twitter, at Adam Farron and at Farron on Film. And stay safe, look after each other, and we'll see you in 2023. Bit to share. Um, I've you, just finished. Well, I've got something. Oh, go on, go on. And if you could buy a black t shirt with me and Adam on, who's Adam? Yeah. You can't buy these t shirts. You can buy these t shirts that have me and dad on, like recording films if you want to, and the same size, and then you can wear them watching the video when it's already done. I feel like I've got brown hair. Say bye, Ruth. Bye, love you. Bye.